What's up everybody, it's another beautiful day on the Dragonflight beta and today we're taking a look at the shiny new and improved Arms Warrior. Anyways, I'll be going over what's been added, what's been gutted and my overall thoughts on the new talent trees. Keep in mind that this is beta testing so a lot of things can change and a lot of this will be my personal opinion. Now good old Arms Warrior and the age old question, do you want to smack one target really really hard or multiple targets really really hard? So it's fairly easy in the current arms tree on beta to build towards extremely heavy AoE featuring Blade Storm, Whirlwind and Warbreaker, or heavy single target featuring good old Mortal Strike and Execute, as well as potential bleed builds, or a mix between all of this depending on content or encounter you're playing. Some fights have constant AoE which could suit a spin to win build, others might have one or two adds spawning every now and then where adding just sweeping strike might be enough, while focusing the rest into single target. So let's check out the tree a bit. To the left we have overpower and bleed theme talents. Down the middle, Colossus Smash and Blade Storm, and to the right side we have Execute, Cleave, and Sweeping Strikes. Mainly Execute stuff though, with some Mortal Strike slash Cleave stuff sprinkled around the tree. So going down the middle, we have for example Colossus Smash, which can be upgraded with Anger Management. Every 20 Rage reduces cooldown on Colossus Smash and Blade Storm by one second. Then you can get either In for the Kill or Test of Might. In for the Kill gives you 10% haste from Colossus Smash, 25% if it hits a target below 35%, adding even more execute value to it. In good old test of might, when Colossus Smash expires, your strength is increased by 1% for every 10 rage you spent during Warbreaker, which makes for some interesting setups to max out as many stacks as possible, giving you a secondary big cooldown from Colossus Smash or Warbreaker. Speaking of, you can also get either Blunt Instruments or Warbreaker. Blunt Instruments, Colossus Colossus Smash damage is increased by 30%, and the damage increase debuff lasts 3 seconds longer. And Warbreaker turns Colossus Smash into an AoE, so you can debuff multiple targets, slap them with deep wounds and all that damage. Now all of these have their different niches, Blunt Instrument is of course better for single target than Warbreaker, might be fights where you can get a lot of uptime on the 25% haste proc from in for the kill due to either long execute or lots of adds. Either way, choices. Now moving down to the Bladestorm part you can talent into Bladestorm. Can be upgraded with Dance of Death, Merciless Bone Grinder, and either Unhinged or Hurricane. Dance of Death, if your Bladestorm helps kill an enemy, your next Bladestorm lasts 3 seconds longer. Pretty much always up in a dungeon, great if you really want to AFK during a pull, go grab a drink or something while you spin to win. Merciless Bone Grinder, when Bladestorm ends, Whirlwind and Cleave deals 50% increased damage for 9 seconds, which might not sound like a ton, but combined with a few other choice talents, Whirlwind slaps. Like Storm of Swords, Whirlwind costs 30 more rage and has a 14 sec cooldown, deals 200% more damage. So follow up a blade storm with a Warbreaker Whirlwind for a very satisfying burst button, which can be further improved in our class tree with for example Seismic Reverberation. If Whirlwind hits 3 or more targets, you spin again for 50% damage. So rather than just weaving in Whirlwind, you do a little setup and slap out a big one instead, so you have time to spam other stuff. And lastly there's Unhinged or Hurricane. Unhinged while Bladestorm is active, you cast a total of two mortal strikes at random nearby enemies. Works with sweeping strikes, so you could have some potential on low target cleave. I guess? Hurricane, while blade storming, you gain 5% movement speed and 5% strength, stacks up to 6 times, and lasts for 6 seconds. This allows us to set up the aforementioned whirlwind slap even further as you'd always end a blade storm with 30% increased strength, which is extremely nice, for both the whirlwind slap as well as cleave spam, and even on single target just getting 30% strength for a few smacks is huge if you set up for it. I have a hard time seeing unhinged value compared to it, but I'm not no arms pro. Now going down the right side of the tree to the execute side of life, you have improved execute, it no longer has a cooldown and if your target doesn't die, 20% of rage spent is refunded. Sudden death for those execute procs regardless of HP, massacres you can execute at 35% instead, critical thinking 2% crit chance and execute immediately refunds 20% rage spent. To fuel your execute spam even further, sharpened blade, mortal strike, cleave and execute crit damage 
damage is increased by 10% and execute has 5% increased crit chance. Gotta make sure they smash. And the big execute stuff, exploiter and juggernaut. Exploiter execute causes the target to take 25% more damage from your next mortal strike, stacks up to two times, making your mortal strikes hit like trains during execute, and adds more value to your sudden death procs. In juggernaut, execute increases execute's damage by 3% for 12 sec, stacks up to 15 times, which makes your execute damage go uh, just a little bit crazy. And combined with all the aforementioned talents, anytime you press execute, you get this feel good tingles, which you promptly follow up with a mortal strike and continue smashing execute with your fist. Now furthermore, on this side of the tree, you also have the option to talent into sweeping strike and cleave, as well as cooldown reduction for cleave. And either storm of swords, which I mentioned earlier, or collateral damage. So storm of sword makes whirlwind hit 200% harder, and collateral damage when sweeping strike ends, your next whirlwind deals 25% increased damage for each ability used during sweeping strike that damaged a second target. So collateral damage has a higher damage potential, or rather you can get well over 300% damage increase on your next whirlwind. It does however require a different kind of setup, and you can't be using things like cleave or whirlwind during it, unless you've talented into fervor of battle, in which case whirlwind away as you'll be slamming as well during it. So on low target cleave it for sure has some potential, where you try and minimax out as many globals as possible during sweepings into whirlwind or into blade storm then whirlwind if you want to empower it further. Whereas storm of swords requires no setup, it's just fire and forget. Or if you want to you combine whirlwind with other stuff when possible. The good part of this whole side of the tree is that it's easy to shift a few points to get access to cleave and sweeping strike when you need them and you can skip them entirely when you don't need them, not gated behind each other in any way. However, going down the left side of the tree for the bleedy overpower stuff. Martial prowess, overpower increases damage of your next mortal strike or cleave. Real nice to combine with execute with exploiter stacks for some juicy mortal strikes. Blood surge, periodic bleed effects have a chance to grant you 5 rage and we have a lot of bleed effects potentially. Tactician, you have 1.40% chance per rage spent on abilities to reset overpower. Pretty mandatory stuff but easy to access. Then we have accelerating blows. Mortal Strike and Cleave have a 15% chance to reset their own cooldown. Giving us some of that proc based RNG I love. It's a great talent as far as DPS increase goes, but it's not super fun. I'm usually all about procs, but Mortal Strike isn't as fun to press as Mortal Strike stacked up with Exploiter and Martial Prowess. But it does help with the rotation overall and it's pretty fun on AoE with Cleave resets. Then there's Dreadnought. Overpower has two charges and causes a seismic wave that deals damage to all enemies in a 10 yard line. Feels weird to ever play without two charges and overpower, but the addition of the I want to say BFA as right trait, which adds an AoE component to overpower is a welcome one. Luckily this one is also very easy to access in our tree. Now following this we have Deft Experience, 2 point talent, mastery is increased by 1% and tactician's chance to trigger is increased by an additional 0.5% per point. So we'd end up with 2.40% chance per rage spent to reset overpower. Tying in with this we have Battlelord. Overpower has 25% chance to reset the cooldown of Mortal Strike and Cleave and reduce the rage cost by 10. Helps a ton with fluidity in our rotation, filling in some of the gaps or downtime. Works well on both single target and AoE. And it sets up a bit for the next talent which is, well, a bit of a weird one. Bit like the old coral trinket from Ashvane. Fatality. Your Mortal Strike and Cleaves against enemies above 30 percent health have a high chance to apply fatal mark. When an enemy falls below 30 percent health your next execute inflicts an additional big chunk of damage. Currently this chunk per stack is more than an unbuffed mortal strike. So you can pretty much say every stack is like an extra mortal strike. Now there's both potential and issues here. One could say potentially issues? Now on a long single target fight where this has a chance to stack up high I can see it being good. Boss falls below 30 percent health and then you instantly instantly chunk off a good portion of that with your next execute. Now this all depends on how many stacks you can get up on a target before execute range kicks in, or 30%, and time spent in execute range versus time spent before, because as far as I can tell, once you're at 30% HP or your target is, it has zero value. 
That being said, at that point we're in execute range so we'll probably be fine anyways. Now potential issue with this one is how fast you can acquire stacks. Currently to max out stacks you'd spam cleave and mortal strike on single target which is a bit weird and then you'd stop at 30% and start execute mortal strike spamming depending on how this one is tuned. So personally I hope that it isn't worth it on single target using cleave that is but on long constant cleave however like council in castle nathria where you can continually stack this on three targets through cleave and sweeping strike then it makes a ton of sense to weave in cleaves but not necessarily on single targets just to get more stacks and this does not do well in dungeon setting because not only won't it have time to stack up but you actually have to execute the targets to consume these stacks but yeah it depends a bit on tuning overall for this one currently like i said each stack hits for more than an unbuffed mortal strike so having like 50 plus stacks on a target is a pretty hefty slap once you reach 30 percent and for some fights that can help a ton as execute range is either the easiest or the by far hardest part of an encounter but i can see a juggernaut plus fatality build where you spam mortal strike and cleave to stack up fatality and once it kicks in you swap to execute spam with juggernaut and exploiter for more mortal strike damage i can however not tell you if it's gonna be good but i can see it furthermore on the left hand side we have bleed stuff and skull splitter skull splitter 30 sec cooldown bash an enemy skull subtle dealing a chunk of damage and generates 30 rage rend gives you rend and skull splitter can be upgraded with fracture to consume your deep wound and rend on the target or to expire instantly dealing their damage for a more bursty skull splitter now i'm not gonna question the logic but bashing someone's head and making it stop bleeding seems odd i guess that's why it says expire so i mean you're bled dry I don't know, I'm not a doctor. Speaking of, you can also get Bloodborne, the talent, not the game. Deep Wounds, Rend, and Thunderous Roars bleed effect deal 7.50 up to 15% increased damage. To not only add to your single target damage, but a ton on cleave and AoE and uses up Skull Splitter further. Then there's Bloodletting, Deep Wounds, Rend, and Thunderous bleed effects last 6 seconds longer and have 5% increased crit chance. Same as previously, especially nice on Thunderous Roar, one of our class talents which is an aoe bleed that lasts for eight seconds so increasing it with an additional six seconds is a lot of damage on aoe now on the topic of bleeds and class tree we can talent into thunderclap with blood and thunder which spreads our rend to up to five nearby targets if you thunderclap a target with rend giving us a ton of bleeds up on aoe so the potential for a bleedy aoe build is there if tuning allows it now with that said let's check out the class tree a bit now there's a ton of fun cooldowns here as well as talents that synergizes with our arm tree now on the cool downside of things we have avatar thunderous roar and spear of bushin avatar can be upgraded with memory of tormented blade master or tormented warlord blade master activating avatar or blade storm cast the other and warlord activating avatar or colossus smash casts recklessness increasing rage gain and crit chance for a few seconds now the blade master one for obvious reasons synergizes very well with blade Bladestorm talents, as we can effectively have a Bladestorm up for every Warbreak we do on AoE, either to use for the Bladestorm itself or for the follow-up damage increase on Whirlwind Slaps. Regardless, adds a lot of momentum to our cooldown usage while set up with Bladestorms. Tormented Warlord, where you get Recklessness, has potential for a low target cleave and single target for extra rage gain and bigger slap. Gives you an extra oof during Colossus Smash windows. Then there's Thunderous Roar, 1.5 minute cooldown, 12 yard AoE deals a chunk of damage and applies an 8 second bleed to targets hit and it generates 20 rage. Can be upgraded with uproar and thunderous words. Uproar reduces its cooldown by 30 seconds, short and sweet. Fusroda increases the duration of thunderous roars bleed by 2 seconds and increases the damage of all your bleed effects by 20% at all times. So this combined with all the other aforementioned bleedy talents you can get some substantial bleed damage going which could have a lot of potential on sustained cleave being able to spread rends and deep wounds on multiple targets consuming them with skull splitter sweeping strikes and blasting them with a 16 sec thunderous roar bleed so yeah there's there's potential then there's good old spear of boostion if you played with it in shadowlands 1.5 minute cooldown deals a ton of damage instantly to all targets hit reduced beyond five and then a ton of damage over time as well and enemies hit are chained for the spears duration 
you also generate 25 rage. Now this can be further upgraded with piercing verdict, 50% increased instant damage and 50% increased rage. In Elysian Might, spear's duration is increased by 2 seconds and while you remain within the spear's area your crit damage is increased by 25%. So not only does this spear do an insane amount of damage, your damage is scaled as well if you cuddle in it. Until a tank pulls everything away and you stand there feeling all sad and stuff. And you can set this up with things like whirlwind slap or blade storm or other cooldowns. So there's a lot of potential builds you can build around these cooldowns depending on what you're going for as well as what type of encounter. If it's heavy AOE, full single target sustain, cleave, etc etc. Now on top of this we have talents like quick thinking, 2 point talent, fully upgraded gives 2% haste and auto attack crits increases auto attack speed by 20% for 10 seconds for more rage gain. We also have access to war machine without having to sacrifice anything for that, meaning more rage gain from auto attacks and killing blows. Barbaric training, slam and whirlwind deals 40% more damage but cost 5 rage. Adding even more to the aforementioned whirlwind slap. What do we have now? At least 200% damage increase, 50% damage increase from blade storm, plus hits again for 50% damage on AoE, and then like 40 to 50% increased strength from test of might and hurricane. And on the topic of slam, you can also talent into crushing force. 2 point talent, fully upgraded, 60% damage increase and 15% increased crit chance. And hey, with fervor of battle, you slam during world- okay, I'll stop. Now there's also talents like Frothing Berserker, 20% chance to refund Mortal Strike and Cleave Rage cost, Armored to the Teeth, 10% of your armor is strength, which is an absurd amount of strength. Shattering or Wrecking Throw, both deals a bit of damage that ignores armor, and this damage is increased by 500% against Absorbs. Wrecking Throw has a 45 sec cooldown and Shattering Throw has a 3 minute cooldown, but that one also removes any magical immunities. Now if there's an Absorb phase for example, this has a ton of value, and if there are any immunes in PvE that we can remove with Shattering, well then that one's great. However, on the utility side of life, there's also a lot of great stuff we can get. Like Berserker Shout, which makes Berserker Rage group wide for the fear removal. So not only can you pop it while you're feared, screw you Tremor Totem, but you can save your friends if you have any. Pain and gain, anytime you take damage you heal for 4.5% of your max HP. 10 second internal cooldown. Bitter immunity, 3 minute cooldown, restore 20% health and removes all disease, poison and curses affecting you, which can be extremely good on certain encounters. Then there's the Diablo 3 class fantasy. If you spec into Heroic Leap, which you will, you can upgrade it with Wrenching Impact, which increases Heroic Leap's cooldown by 45 seconds, but you now pull 5 random enemies within 10 yards to your location where you land. Mm, I've seen this one before, most likely a very niche pick, but might see some uses for stacking mobs on some encounter, perhaps, possibly, I don't know. And the big one, Shockwave, which can be upgraded with Rumbling Earth for a CDR or Sonic Boom for a damage component or a bigger slap on your shock. Shockwave. Very easy to get without losing too much if you ever need it. Now overall there's a lot of fun interactions for arms going into Dragonflight, potential for a lot of different builds catering to different playstyles and encounters as long as it's scaled well so we don't end up with the illusion of choice and then we have a cookie cutter build we just go with. I like the idea of swapping your build around depending on what fight you're up against. And who doesn't like to blade storm around? I mean come on! But yeah that's pretty much it. Let me know in the comments what you think of the new talent tree. Anything you're hyped over or dislike, let me know. Don't forget the usual stuff, like, comment, subscribe and ring that notification bell, it really helps me out. I stream progression and testing on Twitch, Thursdays and Sundays and whenever raid testing is up on beta. Make sure to check out my Patreon if you want to help support me, my work and my goal of upgrading my computer before Dragonflight. I also encourage you to check out the Liquid Women in Warcraft Discord for a supportive and safe Warcraft community. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.